It was only a matter of time before an LT1 found itself on the stand ready to be torn down on the channel. And no, I'm not talking about a late model GM V8, and I'm certainly not talking about an early 70s small block. Instead, I'm talking about that 90s powerhouse LT1, the one you can find in C4 Corvettes, and Camaros, and Firebird Formulas and Trans Ams, the Cadillac Fleetwood, the Impala SS, the Caprice, then the Buick Roadmaster all had an LT1 in them. Now, the big body cars were iron headed engines and the sports cars were aluminum headed. They usually make 285 to 300 horsepower, unless you got the LT4, which makes 330. All the same basic premise built on that old small block 350 cubic inch engine. Now, these engines got a lot of hate. And a lot of people compare these to LS1s, and that's not really a fair comparison because this is some pretty old technology. But in their day, they ran pretty good. Now, if you ignore the horrific ignition system and the uh, propensity to blow head gaskets if you get them just a little warm, then they're actually pretty decent. The, I also don't understand why these didn't come in trucks. Instead, they went with the TBI. I mean, that's reliable, but not even an option? I'm sure some of you guys know why. Another thing I can't figure out is why GM reuses RPO codes. The LT1 could mean three different types of engines. Anyway, now this particular LT1 was bought with a purpose. A friend of mine is looking for a pair of aluminum heads and an OBD2 timing cover, which has a cam sensor in it. The 95 and down cars do not. And this engine is supposed to be locked up. So I'm hoping the head survived. I bought this from another yard. They say it's out of a 97 Trans Am. And if I get heads and a timing cover out of it and a video out of it, everybody wins. Well, let's see if we can substantiate those locked up claims and turn this engine over. Huh, I don't think it's locked up. Is this a good engine? The thing is, it doesn't feel like it has compression. Oh, there's some compression. I spoke too soon. Oh, there's stuff getting caught in the pulleys. Okay, so it's not locked up, which is a good thing. I have a better belief that the heads are good now. Now we can pull the plugs and see if there's any malice in the combustion palace. Replacing a set of plugs in the car on one of these engines is not a great time. On a stand, pretty easy. While auto light plugs aren't my favorite, they are all the same plug. They're all in about the same condition, which is something I like to see. I don't see any bent straps, no smashed electrodes. They just look like old plugs. Now it's clear that this thing has had a water pump put in it, which is pretty much every LT1 now ever has had at least 11 or 12 water pumps put in them. But the important thing is what's behind it. So the OptiSpark is like the Achilles heel of these cars they are not in a great location. I think that's the worst thing about them is when the water pump leaks, it leaks coolant right onto the OptiSpark, which we'll get to that in a minute, but it's, it's behind this, and it's basically the distributor for this engine. Not a great spot for ignition components. Before we go ripping parts off of this, we're gonna start ripping some parts off of this. We're gonna take the wire harness off, it'll clean up a lot of this, and then we'll figure out what we do next. That just ripped. It's fine. All right, looks like I just have some grounds left. Is that it? Yeah, I got a big ground here and one on the other side, and that's it. Oh, 
Well, that got all tangled up in there because the stud came out of the block. Look at this mess. I knew the bad thing is I knew this was happening and I, I just stayed with it like it was going to somehow fix itself. Also, this harness has been cut, so it's not like I ruined anything. Probably worth saving for the connectors, though. And one cut wiring harness that got my shoelace. Before we start pulling the exhaust manifolds, I need to get this EGR pipe off the intake. Nice. Now we have this to contend with. I think this is secondary air. Oh, well, that just broke. That's cool. What is happening here? There we are. I feel like I'm going to punch myself in the face. Yeah. Stay. All right, now I think we can start unbolting the exhaust manifolds. Oh no, the oxygen sensor harness, that's perfect. Oh, it's the same thing on this side, you'd think I'd learn. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove this accessory bracket. Next, we'll remove the ignition module and coil. Uh-oh, bad stuff's happening. Why do these do this? Let's just power through it, maybe? No, oh, it's breaking stuff. No, this is, this is not good. Ah. Well, it did a little damage to the heat sink there, but we got it. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull the left valve cover. Nope, there's a tool for that. Well, that's, that's dirty. Well, it's a little on the varnished side. And uh, one of these push rods I can already see has a bunch of rust on it. So there's definitely been moisture inside this engine, whether that came from how it was stored or the car was parked for a long time, or if there's another source we'll find out All right, now for the right side pretty similar to the other side Definitely some rusty push rods. I don't see anything jumping out at me besides the fact that it's just really dirty in here. The next thing I'm going to do is pull the intake. Now, what you're supposed to do is strip it and then pull it bare. But I don't do things that you're supposed to do. I do things you're not supposed to do. So we're going to try to pull it complete just because that's the way I'd like to do it. Before I take any more intake bolts out, 
we're gonna get this coolant pipe out. Oh, that doesn't look great. Now this is the tough side. I still have one bolt on the other side, but let's get some of these bolts out on this side. Why are all these like this? Well, at least it didn't tear anything up. Oh, I see. Man, I'm gonna get the impact for this. Well, I got some of the low hanging fruit bolts out. Seems like my ratchet is uh is dying here. Not the battery, the actual ratchet itself. Have I finally worn it out? Gosh, I hope not. Yeah, you don't need to take the EGR off. It just makes it, you know, a lot easier. Well, it seems like all of these studs want to come out before the nuts do. That sounds wrong. It's not wrong, but it sounds wrong. Let's hit it with the impact and close your eyes. Hey, it worked. That's violent. Well, for the last bolt on this side, we're gonna use this ratchet wrench. And that may become a problem. Give it enough time. Yep, that's as far as I can get with that. I know what you guys are saying. Just take the throttle body off. No, I don't want to. I like keeping things complete. And now one more. Yeah, you don't need to take all this stuff off the intake to pull it. It's probably a smart idea, but not necessary. Okay, let's see if we missed anything. Well, let's go. That might be it. And it's off. Well, this ain't looking too hot. Got some uh, milkshake in the valley, you know. Could just be condensation. Probably not condensation. And then we've got this stuff. Why did I touch this? And what is it? it looks like uh, that's probably coolant, maybe, or water. But it's not supposed to be in the intake. Well, there's some ugly stuff in the intake, at least in the ports. Like that? Yuck. Not what I want to see on an intake port. Now I know a lot of you guys are rooting for carnage, but please, please no carnage on this one, at least not on the top end. I don't see anything too awful, just, you know, signs of water in the intake. Before we go any further, it's, it's that time again. Time to get the dipstick out. Please be good to me. Oh boy, this is gonna be a problem. Oh, oh. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Oh my God. It's not coming anymore. <sighs> Come on, just let go. 
I got like three inches out of, of the dipstick tube out. That's what I, I meant. Oh, come on. Why is it always the GMV8s? It's always these. I'm sure they don't leak from this, though. <sighs> Let's put up a fight. I just want it out. I don't want to put vice grips on it and distort it. I don't want to do that. I know that's what you guys are saying, but I'll put it on the bracket. All right, we're just going to hit the bracket with a hammer. It's going to be fine. Is it moving? Why? Usually they just don't move or they come right out. It, why? Oh man, this one's kicking my butt. All right, time for the vice grips. Let's try this. It's gonna work. What am I to do here? Oh, that didn't work. Well, I've I've distorted the tube. Freaking thing is. Does it unthread? Is that is that what it's gonna do now? Is there something that keeps it in there besides the fact that it just hates me? It, it moves so good, so good at first. And then it stopped. Oh, now we're moving again. Nope. We are not moving. It's laughing at me. I'm gonna do something I don't like doing. There. I'll deal with it when the pan comes off. Well, I suppose we'll start with the rockers. You know what? We're going to use the impact on this. I don't like doing that, but that's what we're going to do. Ooh, smoking. Now we can pull the push rods out. Uh-oh. Lots of rust. So this is the oil that's coming out of them. That's not a good sign, is it? It's like uh, oil snot. And there's lots of rust. This is, this is not looking too hot. Now we can crack some head bolts loose. So these head bolts were not very tight. These were tight, not tight. All right, hopefully this thing doesn't pee on me. Please don't turn me to Miles Davis. Uh-oh. Well, that uh, head gasket does not look good. Come on, please, please remove yourself. Remove yourself more. Please more remove yourself. So that head gasket is pretty much um, trash. Uh, they're not supposed to do that. No, nope. that's not, that's not good. There's the back side. Looks like right there, 
Might have been a problem. Let's go look at the cylinder head. So here's the head. And you can clearly see there's lots of uh, lots of stuff sat in this for quite some time. I don't see any glaring cracks, but that doesn't mean that we won't find any. So obviously that's not supposed to be there. And there definitely was some rust in here. I wonder what that side looks like. I kind of believe them now that this might have been locked up and maybe it just freed up from being moved around. Before we start on the head, we have one more bracket to pull. Oh, that's that's been JB welded. And uh, I mean, I, I, it did hold until uh, I, I kind of see what happened here. So the stud for the water pump, you know, normal things. Pulled that spacer through and broke this. That is not normal. Why is that so tight? Okay, maybe everything that I own is just weak today. All right, now I've got one more bolt behind the plug wires. Okay, that one was kind of tight. All right, time to get the other head off. Right, now we'll pull the push rods out. Oh yeah. Same goop as before. Varying degrees of tightness is never a good thing. the smell I could go without that now this one should just come right off like the other side uh oh well we got a couple really clean pistons like uh, like they've been chewing on some antifreeze and a destroyed head gasket These heads might not be any good. Look at that backside there. Yeah. Look how much cleaner these pistons are than the front and rear. So it's clear that these two pistons were steam cleaned with some uh, hot coolant. There's also rust in there. Not, nothing feels broken. Let's go check the other side. No, I think I think the bottom end is intact. Here's the other head, and I, I'm really hoping these heads end up being okay. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get them clean. Now that the heads are off, it's time to address the water pump. It's obviously been replaced and copious amounts of orange RTV were used. I, I don't really feel bad about that because I don't use orange RTV, so there's still plenty of gray and black for me. But let's get this off and then we can look at the OptiSpark. Now this does have a dowel. So much RTV, why? It's not, it's not necessary. You guys don't need to do that. And if you're gonna use RTV, don't use orange. That's not for this. Orange is not for cooling systems. So something interesting about these is these are a spline drive water pump. So this spline is termed by the cam and that turns the water pump. This doesn't really feel too bad, but I don't really, 
I don't really know how bad they get. Now this is the OptiSpark. Now I, I really, I know there's a lot of hate for the OptiSpark and a lot of you that owned these cars back in the day probably had trouble with this because they put an, the most important ignition component underneath the water pump which has a propensity to leak and then after a certain year, which this is probably a later one, so, oh it is a later one, it's a 97, they put a, a little vent in these to keep the moisture from collecting inside and I don't really think it helped that much. Obviously whoever uh, did the water pump, copious amounts of orange RTV on everything. Anyway, next we're gonna get the harmonic balancer and then we'll pull this little hub and then we can get the OptiSpark out. Now let's see if we can get this uh, harmonic balancer and the hub off. I'm trying to do it all at one time. There's different ways of doing this and this is the way I chose. Let's see if it works. It might not. Like a glove. All right, now it's time to remove the OptiSpark. And there it is. Now, I don't know if these have any value used. I, I wouldn't suspect they do, especially not anymore. But there was a time where these were really expensive. Now for the single most expensive part of the engine, this timing cover. And it's expensive because it has this crank sensor in it. And this is only OBD2 LT1s had the crank sensor, 95 and down did not. And there's the cover, and yum. Also a very important piece. There's cam gear, and a nice looking timing chain. Before we uh, try to pull the cam out, we're going to get the lifters out of this thing. You know, the W in 5W30 does not stand for water, but this engine seems to have plenty in it. But the lifters all seem to be just fine. They don't care. All the rollers are nice. Now we can pull the cam. This is the last thing I need to pull before we pull the cam out. Oil pump drive. Well, this is definitely a stock cam, and it definitely looks like it's got some miles on it. There's somewhere on the cam journals, the lobes don't look particularly good. That journal looks pretty bad. I can actually feel that with my fingernail. Turns out water's not a great lubricant. Well, it's kind of hard to tell, but cam bearings aren't terrible but they're not great there's definitely a mixture of oil and water in there milkshake brought this car to the yard now we're going to flip this thing over hopefully it doesn't puke a whole bunch of stuff out so that way we can pull the pan Oh, that, that is not oil. Ha, ah, it's plopping it in there. A copious amount of milkshake. And I missed my pan a little bit. It's fine. Now it's time to pull the oil pan.
Okay, what now? Do I have to pull this oil? It feels like I gotta pull this oil sending unit out or oil level sensor. That's what that is. Let's take that out. I bet you that's it. Yep, that was it. Ooh, that's gross. Ha <laughs> Yeah. I wish I could say I was surprised, but I'm not. There's a, a tinge of metal in here, but for the most part, pickup looks clean. It's just oil and water do mix in an LT1. And then now we've got the dipstick tube. Can I get, nope, we're gonna deal with this later. We're just gonna put that there. But we do need to get the oil pump off, this tray out of here, and then we can get the rods and pistons out. Well, it's no surprise the pan looks like this. That is a copious amount of milkshake. Now we can start on the oil pump and this tray. This is so gooey. Ugh. I don't know why I keep touching this. This is it's like stringy. All right, I'm going to go put this in an oil pan and forget it existed. All right, now it's time to win against the dipstick. Okay, really? I got it to move further, but why you know I'm just gonna cut it off and drive it in when I go to sell this block. I'm done. I'm, I, I can't do this. We're just gonna... There, see? Aside from being coated in this milkshake, the rest of this looks okay. I don't see any, anything glaring anyway, but we won't know what the bearings look like, obviously, until we pull caps off. And that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna start at the front of the engine. So I'm gonna get the crank bolt so we can turn this engine over. You always want to start at the front. It's literally cleaner on this end. All right, let's see how this thing turns over. Oh, I'm getting all of the fluid out of it. The rest of this turns over pretty decently. All right, start right there. A copious amount of coolant just came out as I pulled this rod and piston out. That felt bad. Uh, that is not yum yum sauce. I would just like to point that out. This was that rusty cylinder. Nope, this one's leaking too. Ugh. 
This cylinder appears to have some rust too. Oh yeah. The bearings are clearly worn. But I'm not sure that's from having water run through the oiling system or just the fact that this could have had some miles on it. And at this point, this is a pretty old vehicle, 25 years old. Yeah, that one's worn. That's probably the worst worn one. I don't know if it was making any noise though. I, it, there's nothing's too torn up. It's just really worn. The rods and pistons all look to be okay. There's a couple here that had rust. And also the wrist pins are kind of stuck. It would take some work to get those unfrozen. They don't move like uh, full floaters, but they are semi-floaters, so they should turn pretty easily. Yeah, that one's really stiff. That's what she said. But I don't see any damage. Now we can get the uh, main caps loose, pull the crank. Okay, well this does not appear to be very happy. Oh, that's gonna take a little bit of a tap. Just give it a little tap. I said a little tap, that was a big tap. Okay, now this crank should just come right out. The main bearings all have pretty similar wear. This is all just indicative of a high mileage engine. The crankshaft actually looks really nice. Even though the bearings were worn, the journals, they look really good. I mean, it'll have to be checked at a machine shop, but I don't think it needs to be turned. Maybe a polish, but not bad. The bores are surprisingly decent considering that they sat with coolant and rust. This side isn't too bad. There's a little bit of pitting right here. You can kind of feel that, but I have gloves on, so it's probably worse. <laughs> this one is by far the worst. But I think it's still a good builder block. Let's see what we've got here. They're better, but I wouldn't call them great. Not every cylinder head cleans up great in this thing. All right, now we're gonna hit them with the power washer and see if it does any better. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. And rotate. All right, now I'm gonna blow these off and we'll take a look. So here's what the heads look like. I looked them over pretty thoroughly looking for cracks. I didn't see any, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. And I also can't tell if they're flat or if they're gonna need to be resurfaced. I mean, obviously I'd resurface these, but who knows how far they need to be flat. They came out pretty clean, but not all heads come out sparkling clean and new. It just depends on the type of casting. This part looks pretty good. It cleaned up pretty well. And uh, timing cover looks great. That's the most expensive part of all of this. These uh, OBD2 timing covers, it's big money. When this engine was delivered, the very first thing I noticed, a brand new water pump, and a copious use of orange RTV. Giant red flag. I am not surprised at all that this engine had a blown head gasket or two. 
It's actually something that killed a lot of LT1s and a lot of LT1 powered cars back in the day and still to this day. The biggest problem is that people would run them with that mixture of coolant and oil, that milkshake. And milkshake is fine in your cup holder or in your stomach, but not so good in a crankcase. And it would destroy the bottom end. This one doesn't seem to have run very long with a blown head gasket, but it has sat for some time. I think, I think the heads might be okay, but I won't know until those go to a machine shop. And the bottom end didn't look terrible. And actually, the bottom end is for sale. If you'd like to buy the block with the crank and the rods and pistons, I like to sell it as a package, a few hundred bucks. Anything helps, cuts the price of those parts down a little bit. I really hope you enjoyed this teardown. If you'd like to buy parts off of anything else I've torn down, I'm going to leave our email in the video description. You can also go to importapart.com and peruse everything we've got in stock. I've also been uploading my recent parts cars, so you can see our entire part outs. If you don't see what you're looking for, you can fill out our part request form, which sends us an email of exactly what it is you're looking for. As always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all, and I'll catch you on the next one.